Hi friends, it's Miss Amanda from the Allen County Library and it's our second summer reading program. We hope that you enjoy Dental Health, A Visit from the Tooth Fairy today. You're going to learn all kinds of ways to take care of your teeth, the history of some tooth products, as well as a short lesson on the Tooth Fairy herself. Enjoy! When you get your picture taken, everyone says, say cheese smile. So when you do, you open your mouth and you show all of those teeth off. When you see the picture, you see a happy person looking back at you. The healthier those teeth are, the happier you look. But why is that? It's because your teeth are important in many ways. If you take care of them, they'll help take care of you too. Strong, healthy teeth help you chew the right foods, and those right foods help you grow. They help you speak clearly, and yes, they even help you look your very best. Why are healthy teeth important though? Taking care of your teeth helps prevent plaque. Can you say plaque? Plaque, which is a film, it's a clear film of bacteria that sticks to your teeth. After you eat, the bacteria goes crazy over the sugar that might be on your teeth. It's kind of like ants at a picnic. The bacteria breaks it down into acids and that acid starts to eat away that strong tooth enamel that protects your tooth. Plaque also can cause gingivitis. Can you say gingivitis? Gingivitis is a gum disease and that can make your gums feel really red and swollen and sore. Your gums are those soft pink tissues inside of your mouth and the gums help hold the teeth together in your head. So if you don't take care of your teeth, cavities and unhealthy germs, that will make your mouth really, really sore and eating meals might be really hard and you won't feel like smiling so much. So make sure to take care of your teeth. And here in a So how can you keep your teeth healthy? We wanna make sure that kids can take charge and making sure that they are in a really good routine to make sure that their teeth are as good as they can be. First thing let's teach our kids is to brush their teeth twice a day. After breakfast and before bedtime are the best times to brush your teeth. After breakfast, you're gonna brush away all of those things that you just ate. And before bedtime, brushes everything away that you've had during the day. If you can, it's even a good idea to brush after lunch or between those sweet snacks during the day. Brushing uh, properly breaks down all that plaque that we talked about earlier. And don't just brush the teeth that are in the front. Make sure and brush all the teeth. Spend some time when you brush your teeth. Take your time, we're not in a rush. Have your dentist show you the very best ways to brush your teeth without hurting your gums. Cause sometimes we'll brush too hard and that might hurt our gums. But if we don't brush hard enough, it's not gonna take those germs away. Be sure that when you do buy new toothbrushes that you get toothbrushes that have soft bristles and the packaging will tell you if they're soft or not. You wanna make sure to ask your parents' kids to remind you to get a new toothbrush every three months and that will make sure that the toothbrush that you're putting in your mouth is nice and clean. Some, some toothbrushes even come with uh, neat bristles that will change colors when it's time to change your toothbrush. And that helps everybody remember, doesn't it? You might even ask your dentist if it's a good idea for you to use a mouth rinse. And sometimes those are really good to help freshen your breath. I wanna also talk about flossing your teeth. It's really important to get into that habit to floss the teeth. It might feel weird at first, but once you do it a time or two, you'll know what to do and it'll be just fine. You'll slip that dental floss in between each and every tooth and you'll slide it back and forth and pick out all of those food bits that might be hiding. The floss gets rid of food that's hidden where your toothbrush can't get to, no matter how well you brush. So floss is a really good friend of yours. It's even fun sometimes to brush your tongue 
and that helps keep your breath nice and fresh. So real quick, I wanted to share with you some things that were recently invented that helped make tooth uh, brushing a lot easier. So back in the day, before toothpaste was invented, in order for people to clean their teeth properly, they had to use things like chalk and charcoal. Yuck! Sometimes they would even use lemon juice to help swoosh around in their mouth to, re uh, to remove some bad tastes. And lemon juice is really sour, isn't it? Some people would even use ashes from their leftover fires. And even some people would use tobacco mixed with honey to make a thick paste that they would rub all over their teeth to help clean their teeth properly. Yuck indeed. It was only about 100 years ago that someone finally created something that was minty for their teeth to be cleaned with. And then not long after that, toothpaste tubes were invented so people could easily squeeze just the right amount on their toothbrush. Back in World War II, uh, the, uh, the U.S. Army gave brushes out to our soldiers and that's where they learned to really brush their teeth well and to do it often, twice a day. Back then, toothbrush tubes were made out of really thick metal, but now they're made out of soft plastic, so it's a lot easier to be able to squeeze that toothpaste out of our tubes. Today, there are plenty of toothpaste choices. There's lots of colors and flavors to choose from, and some are made just for kids. When you're choosing your toothpaste, make sure it contains fluoride because that makes your teeth really strong and it helps to protect from cavities. And when you brush, you don't need a whole lot of toothpaste. Just a little squeeze, about the size of a pea will do. It's not a good idea to swallow that toothpaste. Just make sure to spit that out when you're done. All right, so since we are talking about teeth, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about the Tooth Fairy, which is right here. Uh, and that just goes along with our summer reading theme of imagining your story. So losing a tooth as a child is considered a rite of passage in many different cultures around the world. And parents throughout history have created really fun rituals with their children. The Legend of the Tooth Fairy is one of the most popular and iconic childhood stories in the entire world. She's not always a fairy though. Worldwide, the tooth fairy varies in appearance. The majority of baby tooth traditions around the world are connected to rodents. And depending on the culture and the nationality, the tooth fairy can be a squirrel, a mouse, a rat. Cultural diversity is one of the things that make the tooth fairy so very unique. And no matter the shape she embodies, the Tooth Fairy is one of the most magnificent magical creatures for children around the world. She's also a lot younger than you think. When compared to Santa Claus, who dates back all the way to ancient history, the Tooth Fairy only dates back to about the early 1900s. She was first mentioned in an article in the Chicago Daily Tribune, and it was an article titled Household Hints. It was a column that was published in September of 1908. The story was further popularized by Esther Watkins Arnold in the 1927 play for children titled The Tooth Fairy. While the specific concept of the Tooth Fairy is recent, Cultures around the world have been commemorating lost baby teeth for hundreds of years. In the 13th century, the Middle Eastern tradition of throwing a baby tooth into the sky and praying for a better tooth to replace it was common practice. In Turkey, Mexico, and Greece, children traditionally will throw their teeth onto their rooftops. Also, the tooth fairy's rates are subject to change based on market fluctuation. Insurance group Delta Dental has been tracking the average tooth fairy rewards since 1998 and comparing their results to the stock market activity. Their research has found that in the last 12 of the past 15 years, 
trends in the tooth fairy payouts have correlated to the movements in the S&P 500. This only can indicate one thing, that the tooth fairy takes her stocks and investments very seriously. She also visits children about 20 times in their lifetime because children, whenever they develop their teeth and they grow, they have 20 baby teeth that should eventually fall out on their own in a span of a few years. Now the Vikings had a tooth fairy too. The Vikings pioneered one of the many expeditions that led to the discovery of the New World and this seemed to have developed something similar in today's modern tooth fairy. While researching the 13th century Scandinavian myths and poetry, the Norse Eddas historians were able to transcribe the Viking language and successfully reference something that the Vikings called the tendefe or the tooth fee. In these writings, they described a ritual that would take place between the parents and the child, in which the mother would offer a really small payment to the child in exchange for that first tooth. Now the tooth fairy also had her own museum. It was located in a split level home of Dr. Rosemary Wells in Deerfield, Illinois. The tooth fairy museum showcased art, books, dolls, and other tooth fairy memorabilia. Dr. Wells took it upon herself to become America's foremost tooth fairy expert and even had her own business cards that were labeled the tooth fairy consultant. Unfortunately, the museum closed following Dr. Wells' death in 2000. The Tooth Fairy also has her own holiday. National Tooth Fairy Day is celebrated annually on February 22nd. However, other sources and calendars also list the holiday as August 22nd. With such a busy schedule, surely the Tooth Fairy deserves two holidays a year, right? she collects a lot of teeth. The Tooth Fairy collects about 300,000 teeth from children all over the world every single night. It's believed the Tooth Fairy uses these teeth to build the fairy community where she lives. And our last fun fact with the Tooth Fairy is she helps to promote those healthy habits that we talked about earlier. Possibly the best thing the Tooth Fairy does is to help parents promote good dental hygiene from very young ages. For years, many parents have told their children that a perfect and healthy tooth is much more valuable than one that might have decay on it. Schedule your child's next dental exam and keep those teeth as clean as possible so that you get more money for that tooth. And we have a very special friend today. This is Mary, the Tooth Fairy Squirrel. Remember when we talked about how different cultures, they didn't have a Tooth Fairy as a girl. They had rodents. And this is Tooth Mary, the Fairy Squirrel. And she really hopes that you take really, really good tech care of your teeth. Mary the Tooth Fairy Squirrel wants to invite you to listen to Miss Amanda's reading of The Tooth Mouse. So I hope you really enjoy this story and remember brush those teeth twice a day. The Tooth Mouse by Susan Hood and Janice Nadeau. We want to thank Kids Can Press for allowing us to read this to you today. Have you ever lost a baby tooth, placed it under your pillow, and found a coin left by the tooth fairy? In many countries around the world, there is no such thing as the tooth fairy. Instead, there is the tooth mouse. Once long ago, atop an ancient cathedral in France, there lived a small mouse who would not go to bed. Shush, cherie, said the roosting dove. It's time to sleep. But I'm not sleepy, said Sophie. I want to play tooth mouse. Cranky old cats can't catch me. Watch this. And Sophie executed a perfect pasta chat. Then Sophie stopped. She heard a noise. 
It started with a scribble scrabble, then a scuffle, then a scramble. With a jump and a jeté, Sophie was away. She followed the sound down, down, around, and around. Until she found herself in the great hall of the cathedral, where a crowd of mice was assembled. A hush fell over the room. Sophie stood on her tiptoes to see a stern but elegant old mouse appear from the shadows in a shower of moonlight. Sophie gasped. It's the tooth mouse, la petite souris. Bonjour, cried the tooth mouse. My friends, as you know, I have served faithfully as the tooth mouse for many years, dodging cats, collecting coins, and delivering the money to children in exchange for their baby teeth. But I am not as spry as I used to be. I have decided it is time to name my successor. Ah, said the crowd. Silence, said the tooth mouse. She paused to eye the mice over her spectacles. All those who wish to be chosen will be given three tasks. You must prove that you are brave, honest, and above all, wise. Sest moy, thought Sophie. Choose me, choose me. For your first task, said the tooth mouse, bring me the whisker of a cat. Many mice attempted the first task. Did they all succeed? Mas non. Most were happy to escape with their lives. Only five returned with the required whisker. Tress be in, said the tooth mouse, eyeing Sophie, the smallest contender with interest. Her whisker doesn't count, complained one mouse. She's too little to be the tooth mouse. We shall see, we shall see, said the tooth mouse. Now, you five may be brave, but are you honest? For your second task, bring me a silver coin. Beware, thievery will not be permitted. I will be watching. The five mice set about the second task. Did they all succeed? Moss non. Only three obtained a silver coin by honest means. They presented the coins to the tooth mouse. Felicitations, she said with a hint of a smile. You three are brave and honest. Now for your third and most difficult task. Follow me. The tooth mouse led Sophie and the others down dark corridors into the deep recesses of the cathedral. She withdrew a key from her cloak and unlocked a tiny door that opened into a massive room. She led the way into the chamber and gestured to the charts that lined the walls. Voila! Here are the names and addresses of the thousands of children who are expected to lose a tooth in the next three days, she explained. What will I do with all of those baby teeth? You will have until sunrise tomorrow to present with me a plan. Thousands of baby teeth? Mess non, it is impossible, thought Sophie, her tail dragging as she trudged home. Back atop the cathedral, Sophie slumped against a kindly mother dove. She whispered, I tried so hard, now I'll never be the tooth mouse. Go to sleep, Cherie, cooed the dove. Sometimes the wisest answer is the simplest one. I'm sure something will come to you. That night, Sophie did go to bed, but she dreamed of teeth. Shiny teeth, tiny teeth, munching teeth, crunching teeth. Chewing, chattering, gnawing, waffing teeth. What would she do with thousands of baby teeth? When the little mouse awoke, she sat up and smiled. Ah, oh, mice, oi, of course. At sunrise, the three mice arrived in the great hall to present their plans to the tooth mouse, and the crowd assembled there. We could build a castle, said the first mouse, unveiling his idea with a flourish. Ah, said the crowd. Mice non, said the tooth mouse. With all the baby teeth, this castle would cover the kingdom. The second mouse stepped forward with her proposal. We could roll them into the sea, she said. Ah, said the crowd. Mice non, sniffed the tooth mouse. With all the baby teeth, we would fill up the sea. At last it was Sophie's turn. Her tail twitched as she unrolled her plan and gave it to the tooth mouse. The tooth mouse said nothing as she studied Sophie's proposal. 
Then the aged face broke into a wide smile. Ah, she said, my soy, so simple, so wise. She turned to face the crowd. We have found a winner. I present to you the new tooth mouse. Sophie, the small mouse, who would not go to bed, spent the rest of her nights as the tooth mouse La Pete Souris, showing bravery, honesty, and wisdom. She dodged cats, collected coins, and delivered the money to children in exchange for their baby teeth. And what did she do with all of those baby teeth? She gave them to babies, of course. La Fine. Miss Mary, the Tooth Fairy Squirrel, has a fun suggestion for kids. A lot of time kids want to put their tooth underneath the pillow for the fairy to come and get. But sometimes it's really hard for that fairy to get in underneath the pillow and out without disturbing you. So she is suggesting you make a door hanger to slide your tooth in so she can come and get that tooth without disrupting your sleep time. So watch the next few clips on how to make your very own door hanger to slip your tooth in for your fairy to retrieve. Just a second. In the comment section below, there is a template for a tooth. Please cut that out and place on a piece of felt that has been folded in half. Once you trace the tooth onto the felt and cut it out, you should have two teeth that are in the shape of the template. Make sure your hot glue gun is ready. On one of the teeth, I have traced an inside edge for you to see how you need to put your glue onto the felt. This will help create a seam for whenever you place the second felt piece on top. It's important to make sure to leave part of the top of the tooth open. Do not glue it all the way across. Once your two pieces are glued together, you're going to put two small holes in each corner. Now it's time to find some pretty ribbon. Each ribbon should be placed into the hole. I have secured mine with glue, but you are more than welcome to tie knots. Once it is secure, it's time to decorate. Here, I have added Google eyes. My next part was to add a nose. And then I added a mouth and a fun little decorative flower in the, in the corner. There's lots that your child could do here. We'd love to see their creativity. So please upload their finished products in the comment section below. Mary the Tooth Fairy Squirrel and I hope that you have enjoyed this summer reading program. We're gonna end it today by singing a really popular song. We're gonna pretend that our finger is a toothbrush, but we're not gonna stick our finger in our mouth, okay? We're gonna pretend, we're gonna ch -ch -ch -ch. So let's practice that real fast. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Ready, here we go. When you wake up in the morning at a quarter to one and you want to have a little fun, you brush your teeth. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Ch -ch -ch -ch. You brush your teeth. Ch -ch -ch -ch. 